Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Fight Focus. And for today's video, we will be covering terrifying leg kicks that cause legs to fail. Also, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and comment what video you want to see next. Let's get to it. There's a faction among combat sports fans who hold one technique above all others. To this modest elite society, nothing beats the aesthetic of a fighter chopping down their opponent. From Pedro Hizo to Edson Barbosa, low kick masters are consistently the most feared fighters in martial arts. Besides Abim Nurmagomedov, a limping opponent can be rendered helpless as they're continuously battered. UFC commentator Joe Rogan has compared being hit full swing to the impact of a baseball bat. It doesn't really matter how great a fighter is, when they decide to not check harmful leg kicks, it could for sure put a dent in their game plan over time. For this list, we have comprised some MMA and kickboxing leg kicks that noticeably cause the fighter to second guess their chances in a bout. Honestly, it's surprising to see that some of these fighters' legs didn't fall off in the process. So without further ado, this is terrifying leg kicks that cause legs to fail. Number 12, Michael Tomahawk Thompson. Michael Thompson and Thomas Wachowski battled it out for the WKN World Lightweight Muay Thai title at Total Carnage Fight Night 3 on April 7, 2013 on the Gold Coast, Australia. The fight didn't last long at all, probably only 30 seconds of the first round. Tower with his kicking. Oh, especially that one there, right to the thigh. Oh, and it's uh, it's kicked him on the thigh, and uh, it looks to be under a dislocated knee. Couple kicks to the thigh, and it was all over to the point his leg was totally failing. I mean, to the point where he had to be carried out by a stretcher. Number 11, Amanda Nunes. Midway into the first round, Shayna Baszler could no longer stand after a kick slammed into her knee, giving Nunes her first win since the setback against Katzengano. Oh, oh, that's it. Oh, and that's oh, it. Oh, oh, oh. Another stoppage win for the budding contender. Number 10, Ernesto Hoost. Everyone already knows, right like hospital, left like cemetery. It wouldn't be the case though this time when he faced Ernesto Hoost in the K1 Grand Prix quarterfinals back in 96. In the end, Hoost's accuracy simply proved too much for Krokop, one of Hoost's greatest assets was his ability to zero in on an injury and take his opponent right out of the game. I mean, he speaks volume that the man who is known for powerful kicks was limping back to his corner after having to end the fight due to a low kick KO. Number 9, Yuta Kubo. Speaking of zeroing in on an injury, injury or not, Yuta didn't hesitate to chop down his opponent's leg. <laughs> Hitoshi had fallen twice in that fight. The first instance was earlier in the first round, but after he had fallen the second time, the ref stepped in after he believed he'd seen enough. Yudo was still landing the leg kicks while Hitoshi was on his way down to the canvas. Number 8, Pat Barry. Pat Barry made his UFC debut at UFC 92 against Dan Evanson and let the heavyweight division know what he's all about leg kicks. He downright murdered Evanson's leg with powerful kicks, which led to Barry's third TKO victory via leg kicks. After eating a good amount of leg kicks, Evanson stumbled back and decided to wave off the fight knowing his leg had no use for him anymore. Evanson's knee had turned inside out, causing his knee to be completely blown out. Number 7, Alex Perez. Alex Perez stopped Juicy F Formiga with leg kicks at UFC 250. The calf kick was a little too much to handle. I mean, you could just tell from Formiga's face that Alex was throwing stingers. Him up. Formiga can't put any weight on that kick. Sit up. Look at that left leg. That is a mess. Oh, oh my goodness. That's it. That's it. Wow. The leg kicks began to take a toll as Formiga's movement slowed down about halfway through the first round. Number 6, Dustin Poirier. The Irishman had no answer this time around as Poirier executed an expert game plan of perfection, using precise leg kicks to weaken McGregor's base before unloading a barrage of shots to end it inside the second round. McGregor was forced to use crutches to make his way to the post-fight press conference and admitted his leg was quote-unquote completely dead. But one of them sunk in early and Thiago said that was a good one. And I was in my head thinking, yeah, boss, that it was a good one. And then it just started accumulating up and... Connor suffered minor damage to the perineal nerve, also known as the fibular nerve in the right leg. Number 5, Jeremy Stevens. 
Stevens opened the contest with a powerful low kick as Melendez kept his hands high and looked to settle into a rhythm. Stevens continued with the attack to the leg and a nasty welt developed just below the left knee. Carrie Ann Taylor Melendez, herself an MMA fighter and kickboxer, uploaded two pictures to social media illustrating how badly her husband's left leg was doing compared to his right. The knee on his left leg was about twice the size of his right. Number 4. Antony Hardonk It's amazing to see how vastly superior the UFC heavyweight ranks have become in such a short period. The third pregame scrap saw Dutch debutant Antony Hardonk tussle with late sub Sherman Pendergast. Here, being picked apart by Anthony Hardonk. Nice straight jab. Oh, this fight was not much of a contest as Hardonk had already hurt Sherman in the earlier round, but the leg kick would be the icing on the cake. The European overwhelmed the possibly underprepared Pendergast and route to a first round stoppage, capping affairs with a right straight and a hard kick to the left leg. Number 3. PTT Rujiro Wong Experienced Thai standouts surely have a much stronger tolerance for low kicks than your average UFC fighter. That made it all the more impressive when PTT immediately dropped his opponent and finished in the first round via leg kick TKO. Bruce will have a tough head on him. Oh, oh unbelievable. That is leg. one of our bonuses. What, was it leg kick, kick well? knockout. We haven't seen one of those in ages. Number 2. Jose Aldo Faber took a total of 31 kicks to the legs. The fighter admitted that he was in a lot of pain starting near the beginning of the fight when Aldo got some good kicks in. Towards the end of the fight, Faber was limping and unable to fight his best. You no, know, he's taking away most of his mobility. Faber can't do much right now. And again, oh, he's, man. he's badly, badly he's jacking up the knee is what he's doing too. Now he's there were no adjustments that could compensate for his lack of mobility. I mean, even looking at his leg, you can't even deny that Uriah was a total warrior for taking those on. Number 1. Justin Gaethje In Joe Rogan's podcast, the subject of bone density was discussed. Apparently, Justin Gaethje believes his bone density has led to his outstanding leg kick prowess. In an early fight, 24-year-old Justin Gaethje made Brian Cobb tap from leg kicks. Gaethje throws his kicks with such determined power that his opponent visibly react to them. Justin also faced Brian Foster at WSOF 29 for the World Series of Fighting Lightweight Championship. Still trying to shake it off a little bit, Chael. Yeah, he's kicking him in the calf. What he's doing is essentially what we uh, colloquials call a Charlie horse. He's giving him a Charlie horse. This is and a Ben Tell Henderson here. technique. Having never lost a single fight in his MMA career at the time, Gaethje maintained that record as he knocked out Brian Foster with leg kicks to successfully defend the title belt. And that right there concludes this list. Let us know what we did in the comments below. All right, MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also, don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next.